Hey there, Ahar here, and today we are back with another video on Guardian Druid Rotation. So, for this video, I'm primarily going to be going over situations inside of Incarn while pulling a large number of mobs. When to press, you know, Mangle, Thrash, spending Rage on Iron for Raise, things like that. And then at the end, I'll kind of go over briefly rotation outside of Incarn. That one is a bit more straightforward. Um, well, not a bit more straightforward, but rather uh, it's slightly more complicated, but it's pretty set in stone. And I think that's the one where I think for the most part, everybody kind of knows what to do. It's inside of Incarn where it might get a little bit uh, tricky. So uh, before we get into that, let's just go over a couple of assumptions that I'll be making for the sake of this uh, video. And these are based off of my my own character, Thrash, bleed tick seven times over 11.3 seconds, uh, taking melee hits every two seconds, and the mobs are, uh, or rather half of the mobs are kind of hitting you. I'm taking a bit more of a conservative estimate just so that we have uh, the the worst case scenario in a sense. And then GCD is every one second. My my realistic GCD is like 1.15, something like that. Uh, 1.18, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's not one second. However, assuming it's one second, I'll just make things a little bit easier. So jumping straight into it, we have rage generation. The number of targets is how many targets are in your pool. So say for example, in Brackenhide, um, inside of the tree area when you're pulling oaks, you can definitely go up to 30 targets. And then, you know, 20 target pulls. You have them in quite a few dungeons, just depends on how big you're pulling. Freehold, you can definitely pull up to 20 targets, things like that. Although Freehold is more like a 10 to 15 target. I think 20 target is still going to be more like a Bracken High, maybe first pull of Oldman, um, first pull of Halls and Fusion. And these are pulls that uh, I guess are more of a high, high key pushing pulls. I would not recommend these pulls for everybody, but this is just to give a range, give you an idea of what to do when you do pull this big. Not recommending anybody to go pull this big. Okay, so for Mangle, just gonna be a flat 15 rage um, every time you press it. Thrash, I kind of took out the five rage you you initially get from from just pressing it. I'm just calculating the ticking. For the most part, it's gonna like the ticking part is going to be the majority of it. So this part will probably be slightly higher if you added the five rage in there and you averaged it out across 11.3 seconds i was just uh, a little lazy is all um and then getting hit oh i guess for the thrash uh the way i did it was two rage per tick because of blood frenzy so every single time the bleed ticks you get two rage and again it's seven ticks and that my thrash bleed lasts 11.3 seconds. So, formula's right up there. And then getting hit, kind of the same thing. Number of targets, I halved it. And then each hit is three rage. Each melee hit is three rage. And if you're getting hit every two seconds, you divide it by two to get the uh, rage you're, you're, you're generating over each GCD. And so if you add these up for mangle raise, mangle raise, if that's uh, the rotation you're playing, then this is the rage you're generating uh, every GCD. If you are just maintaining your thrash bleed and you're not doing mangle raise, mangle raise, this is the rage you're generating per GCD. So, for the most part, as you can see, in a 30 target scenario, you 
you're generating a shit ton of rage and we'll be taking a look at the rage spenders in a second but just briefly um off of this row if you're spamming iron for 24 7 and you're spending or and you're spamming rays 24 7 you are spending 60 rage per gcd you have more rage generation um than you can spend in a 30 target pull now obviously you know there's no pull where you're probably gonna have 30 targets for the entire duration of your Union Garden. So this is probably not too realistic. But when you do have those 30 targets, you will have more rage than you can possibly spend. And uh, well, we'll, we'll kind of get into the stuff later. We'll come back to this. But for the rage spent, um, the spenders per GCD, so again, if you're spamming iron for 24-7, raise inside of incarn is 20 rage. Iron for inside of incarn is 20 rage per 0.5 seconds. So it'll be 40 rage per second. Um, and again, this is inside of incarn, so these are reduced by 50%. Normally raise is 40 rage, iron for is 40 rage. And this is assuming you have no endurance no uh, or not not no endurance um this is assuming you have no gory fur i'm not taking gory fur into account here just to make you know calculations again a little simpler um kind of a worser case scenario so if you have Ursox endurance which is it increases your iron fur duration by two seconds then your iron fur is going to be nine second duration. And if you want to maintain five iron furs, then you'll be spending something like 11.1 rage uh, per GCD to maintain those five stacks. And then without endurance, you'll be spending 14. You'll be spending a bit more. Uh, Ursox Endurance, again, is two seconds, so you'll be pressing five Iron Furs pretty much every seven seconds within the span of a second, second, seven second window. Five Iron Furs. And then totals are right here. So for the most part, um, what it looks like is if you just wanted to maintain five Iron Furs, which is kind of like the uh, cap, I guess. You, you can get a bit more if you go like six, seven stacks of, of iron fur. Actually, I don't even know if seven will give you more, but it's very, very minimal to where it's not, it's not gonna make or break um, whether you die or not. F4 is already plenty, but you know, if you wanna be very safe, you can go up to five. Um, but again, at, at five stacks of, uh, five stacks of iron fur with endurance, it's pretty much 31 rage spent per GCD if you're spamming rays and maintaining five stacks of iron fur. So if you do like a 15 target pull, you will again be rage capped. And then same for without endurance, you will be rage capped. And again, these are kind of conservative numbers. In my opinion, I think if you're pulling five targets and you're just maintaining five stacks of iron fur, you'll probably be rage capped even if you spam more iron furs. Um, 10 target scenario, you will not be rage capped. But again, I'm not taking into consideration things like gory fur if you're playing. If you're playing after the wildfire, I'm not taking into account the rage saved when you have tooth and claw procs, uh, things like that. So, and, and things like uh, also if you have to press frenzied regen, so that's you know a GCD not spent um, generating rage or spending rage, or well, I guess you are spending rage, but it's uh, less 
compared to what you would spend on rays. Frenzied region is only uh, 10 rage. Alright, so we're going to combine that all in a bit when we take a look at the damage done when just spamming rays, when spamming mangle rays, um, and tooth and claw raises. So down here, in this last part, so we're going to take a look at damage done, done in a 2 GCD window. If you have 30 targets and you're just pressing raise, and I'm assuming for me, my raise is doing 25k, my mangle is 23.78k, and this is per target. Um, mangle will cleave three targets in Incarn, and then raise will obviously hit every single target. Um, so for raise, we will be doing 1500, and again, these numbers are. Uh, kind of arbitrary doesn't really matter because you know your 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 numbers are going to get buffed by aug evokers i don't know buffs this is this is just my tooltip unbuffed it, it really does not matter um yeah so again for damage just raise this is damage mingle raise so again this is taking into account that Ray's is hitting, or, or uh, Mangle is hitting three targets, and Ray's is hitting every target. Um, this is Ray's with just Tooth and Claw Brocks, so both GCDs are spent on Ray's Tooth and Claw. Both of them are Tooth and Claw Brocks. And this is Mangle plus Tooth and Claw Ray's. Um, and this does take into account Vicious Cycle. Since that is a talent, you pretty much run most of the time. Well, almost all of the time. There's a lot of uh, DPS increase. Uh, so without Tooth and Claw Box, let's just take a look at the first two columns. As you can see, it is more damage to just spam raise. Uh, up to... What is it? Eight target. Eight target um, and above is where you, you just... You know, spamming rays if you can afford and do so is just more worth it. And then below that, you want to be pressing mingle rays, mingle rays, because of vicious cycle. If you have tooth and claw procs, um, spamming rays is going to be more worth it. Obviously, with tooth and claw is just going to be the highest amount of damage output so this one is a bit of a unrealistic scenario obviously you're not going to have raise for every or you're not going to have tooth and claw for every single raise but if we take a look at the most right column this one is where you you want to kind of pay attention to in pretty much every single scenario as you can see here compared to the raise column you want to be pressing a mangle into a tooth and claw raise because it will do more damage than just spamming raise itself so essentially what this means is you want to press raise 24 7 if you can afford to do so and then whenever you get a tooth and claw proc you want to press mangle first before uh, using that tooth and claw on raise now, pretty much combining everything together, um, what it looks like is in a 15 target scenario, uh, and I also forgot, this uh, total rage generation does take into account the 15% increased rage generation you get from your tier set, so that kind of is calculated in there, but again, these are some very conservative um, estimates. I mean, you definitely will be generating more rage than this in a in a realistic scenario. I'm almost certain of that, especially if you're running talents like Gory Fur. And again, this does not take into account Tooth and Claw Brocks, um, GCD spent pressing Frenzy Regions, kiting, etc. So again, in a 15 target scenario, you 100% can spam raise the entire time while maintaining 5 stacks of iron fur. And if you are uh, a little bit more suicidal like me, if you're just, you know, 
maintaining two to three stacks, then you'll definitely have plenty of rage to spend on rays at lower number of targets. Um, I think inside of a 10 target scenario, I am for the most part usually able to spam raise the entire time, uh, assuming I'm maintaining roughly like two, two to three stacks, I'm using my defenses properly. Um, yeah, usually speaking, I would say anywhere from like 10 to 13 targets, maybe, maybe a little higher. So around the 13 target area, for sure, I can continue to spam raise while maintaining a, a healthy number of iron first stacks to where I can survive. So hopefully this helps you guys a little bit more for your rotation. And then outside of Incarn, lastly, um, maintaining five stacks of Thrash is definitely priority number one. Um, that is 10% damage reduction to you, as well as, or 10% damage reduction, like kind of intake, you take 10% less damage, as well as you deal 10% more damage to every single target. So very important, never let this drop. And then you obviously want press mingle to generate more rage as well as get vicious um, cycle stacks and then maintain three to five stacks of iron fur just to be safe you can go lower if you want again uh, if you feel like pack doesn't really do too much damage to you maybe there's a lot of casters your iron fur stacks aren't going to do too much then that would be a scenario where you might want to spend more rage on rays because the Ursox Fury shielding will save you as compared to extra iron for stacks that will do absolutely nothing against magic um, gas. And then again, <coughs> for excess rage, spend it on rays. Um, this one is the one where I think is important where most people kind of go over is when you have an extra filler an extra, you know, GCD where Mangle is on cooldown, Thrash is on cooldown, you don't have enough rage to spend on rays, then press a Moonfire on the high health target if you do have one. Otherwise, you can press Swipe as a filler. But um, for the most part, somebody will have to kind of do the prio damage, funnel damage to your high health targets. Your pack lasts as long as the last mob is alive, so making sure everything dies evenly is extremely important in terms of making your routes more efficient, making killing packs more efficient, things like that. Uh, but generally, this isn't this this isn't as big of an issue this tier because uh, S priest is very very strong this tier, so S Priest pretty much handles most of that. Prior tiers, you had like hand shamans, but generally speaking, I would say some of these prior targets, mini bosses, you definitely want to be doing a bit more single target because they have just so much more health than your trash mobs. So for those, you definitely want to maintain Moonfire on that high health target. Okay. Uh, there are probably some things I missed in here, but the purpose of this video was just to kind of give you an idea of my thought process. You know, when I have a shit ton of rage, it is definitely worth it to spam iron fur and raise at the same time. Uh, you're just getting extra damage out of your iron furs. I've heard, you know, or I've I've been asked, you know, whether whether you should just maintain five sacks of iron fur and that's it. Um, there are definitely scenarios where you can spam iron fur and raise at the same time, non-stop. Like five sacks of iron fur is not the limit. You can definitely press it more, even though it doesn't help you defensively. It's just more damage. It is really bad to stay rage cap. You want to be um you want to be not unrage capped as much as possible 
because uh, obviously you're losing damage. So, yeah. Hopefully this helps a bit with your guys' keys in terms of min-maxing damage a bit more and just, you know, your overall rotation. If you guys see any issues or maybe there's something big I didn't, you know, take into consideration, then definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, try to make edits in the description below. I'll have this spreadsheet as well in the description and that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.